All right, this is just a quick little movie about my uh, elevator uh, top swivel. This is for my shop elevator. That in the middle of your frame is a Timken roller thrust bearing with a bolt through it. This is some crazy weldment I made. And uh, this top part here, it's a three-quarter inch shaft. That shaft would be, uh, well, uh, this one here, as a matter of fact, like this. Then, uh, yeah, let me show you how this works. This goes through here, and then this goes in here like this. And that goes there, and then this thing goes in there. You know, like that, okay? Some sort of hitch pin clip or whatever. You know, the hardware store. Now, this is a three-quarter inch diameter cold rolled shaft, okay? And uh, this is a piece of half inch cold rolled. That's just for mock up purposes. This is some epoxy glue. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, this is a piece of half inch cold rolled with a hook on the end. This goes here. This end. Okay. And uh, let me put this together for you because this is the exciting part. Uh, if I can do it. You know. Uh, maybe I can, maybe I can't, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, this goes like this. Uh, yeah, like that. And then this, if I can get it to line up here, uh, it goes like that. And then, that little hook, wherever you are, see that hook, it fits down into that. Then you give it a tap, like that. And then you uh, put this other uh, clip in it, thusly, uh, like that, okay? Now, you have this roller here, which actually came out of a uh, $5 Harbor Freight snatch block so-called thing, which is actually a piece of crap. And uh, let me get to that with you in a minute. But, this bolt, so I put this thing together, the idea is, this thing goes, to, this pin, and my left two fingers are wrapped around, sort of, that pin goes through a piece of 3 8 by 3 flat bar at the top of the staircase, it'll be angled, the staircase is approximately 30 degrees, okay, and the thing will be angled 90 degrees like this, that piece of flat bar. I gotta make another weldment for that, okay? Then this, the hoist, which is in my elevator, has a wire rope that runs around this and back down to the hoist frame, so it's a two to one. So I got a 1,500 pound lift capacity, in theory anyway, with this uh, 750 slash 1,500 pound, uh, you know, northern tool uh, piece of junk uh, hoist deal. Okay, and uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in here, but there's a space between the pulley and the top of that yoke there. It's big enough to fit the hoist cable, but just barely. And uh, see, I don't have a milling machine, I don't have a lathe. So I gotta do what I can do with just a drill press. So I got a drill press. It drills a pretty straight hole, I've checked it. And uh, and this thing, in theory, you're looking at the top part. This is the top that goes to the top of the stair at the top of the stairs. Actually, the thing will be angled, okay, like yay. The whole idea behind this was to have it so that when I'm pulling on the right, where the load is, the load will be on the right here. When I'm pull when I'm pulling down on the right, this thing has to be free to swivel back and forth which it is because of that Timken bearing in there. That's a Timken uh, roller thrust bearing. And I had to buy a metric tap, believe it or not. This turned out to be a metric. This is a metric uh, bolt. And the threads on it are M16 by 2.0. And uh, I didn't, I had a, I bought a metric nut. In my first attempt, I welded a metric nut in between these two halves. 
And uh, the nut was supposedly a hardened nut. Uh, anyway, it's all I had at the hardware store, and I didn't feel like shopping all around town, so I bought a hardened nut, and uh, I welded it in, and when I clamped it across here with my giant vice grips, apparently what happened is the nut compressed somewhat, which necessitated me buying an M16 by 2.0 metric tap of the taper type, which I didn't really want to do, but I did anyway. You know, eBay, you know, that old nuisance. So, uh, yeah, then you got to wait six days for it to come from wherever it's coming from. And then uh, and then I bought five more of the damn things. So now I got six M16 by 2.0 metric taps. I'm not going to live long enough to make them all dull. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, matter of fact, this is probably going to be the only M16 by 2.0 thread I ever, I ever tap. I tapped it into this, that being this here, this piece, which is actually a piece of three-quarter stock. It's a piece of three-quarter. It was a three-quarter by two, but I cut it down with my welding grinder to about three-quarter by inch and a quarter. It's inch and a quarter this way, three-quarter that way, and uh, to make the welding, you know. So now it's welded on all four sides. When I welded in the nut earlier, I only welded it here, here, and on the flip side here and there because the nut is uh, six-sided, okay? <clears throat> and I couldn't weld it in there because it was too close to the threads. Actually, what I did is I uh, I took like a quarter-inch nut and bolt and a couple of washers, and I put them on the... I clamped them in there because I didn't want to get any welding slag into the threads because I, at that time I didn't have a tap. And uh, so I bolted it in, I clamped this thing, and then I welded it, which turned out to be a mistake because I clamped it too hard, and I compressed the nut. So anyway, that's just part of the story. And uh, this I used... I used a uh, three-quarter drill bit because, number one, my, uh, <laughs> you got to use what you got, you know what I mean? That's the moral of the story. I have, uh, I had some three-quarter cold rolled, and I had some half-inch cold rolled, and this thing, this thing was a nightmare. Let me show you this. Let me pull this thing out if I can get it out, right? Okay. This comes out like this. Yeah. Like that. This thing, where are you? This camera is a trick to catch up with. This thing is a Harbor Freight sheave from their snatch block. However, however, the thing is only only the thickness of the distance between the inside tips of my uh, thumbnails. I added three sixteenths. What happened is there was so much slop in the thing it was repulsive. In other words, this wasn't the original shaft. It was a metric bolt of a crappy nature. And uh, and then there was some steel insert in here, which was like a cramped piece of flat stock, uh, a crimped round. It wasn't even a piece of pipe. It was a it was an insert. So anyway, I got, I, I got disgusted with it. I just uh, drilled this thing out of my drill press, okay? I drilled it a half, and I oiled it, and I drilled it, and I drilled it. And uh, <clears throat> then I had this bushing in my bushings collection turned out to have uh, actually five eighths. I drilled it five eighths. This is half. This thing here is half. I drilled it five eighths and I pushed this thing in using nuts and bolts and sockets and whatever. I pushed that in. So then it was sticking out about three sixteenths on each side. So then I had to make three sixteenths thick washers with five eighths bores, and, uh, which I did with my handy dandy cut off of welding grinders and whatever. I hope this thing will focus for you. you know, that's what it looks like, okay? I'm trying to get the focus right for you. You tap the screen on this thing, it comes into focus. Sometimes you can do a real macro focus. This may or may not be one of the times. But anyway, what happened is... Uh, I welded these washers onto this this sheave. The sheave turned out to be uh, the sheave is steel. The washers are steel, so I welded them on. But I only have a dial arc. I don't have a MIG, so I put a nice spot there and a nice spot there. And then I didn't like the look of it, you know. So uh, I filled it in with epoxy. So I'm not gonna lie to you, you know. And a matter of fact, when I was welding it, you can tell if you look close. 
look real close, you can see I boogered up to I boogered up the sidewalls just a tiny bit, which meant I had to go around and file it out again and blah blah blah, big hassle. Then I sanded this flat, you know, and sanded that flat on a piece of wet sanded it, you know. So now this is a good fit. Fits in there. It's got the right action. This thing goes. That thing goes in there. You know, this goes there like that. You tap it in one time. Like, yay. And that fits like that. And then you put that little hairpin clip in it. The whole idea being, these things have to be parallel or as close as I can get them to being parallel, which they are. Or let's put it this way, without a machine shop and a real complicated setup, I can't tell if they're parallel or not. However, I can tell you one thing for sure. When I, I, I epoxied, this is epoxied in here, okay? I epoxied the bolt threads. After I lubed the, the uh, thrust bearing and put it in there, I epoxied, I put some uh, epoxy, this white epoxy here, into, uh, into the threads. And then I screwed this thing on. I screwed the thing in my right hand on. And then I hung the whole thing from above. I hung it from this pin.